Can you just kind of explain what happened on like leading up and then on the sideline and kind of the whole process of you uh, getting treated? Yeah, so basically uh, I was playing defense and it was on a 13 play drive by Tennessee Tech. And I was tired, but everybody was tired, so I didn't think nothing of it. Came off the field with everybody else on defense and just sitting there with some of my teammates, Daryl Vine and Tyreek Lyles. We were talking about the, the plays and stuff like that, going over schemes, and um, just kind of zoned out out of nowhere. And the world kind of got, like, I got lightheaded, and the world kind of zoned out around me. And just next thing I know, I woke up in the ambulance. Like, if nothing happened, didn't really know what was going on, but I was fine when I woke up. What happened from there in terms of being diagnosed? I mean, it seemed like it was kind of a quick diagnosis. Is that accurate? Yeah, probably, I would say within like 36 hours, they figured out, what, or probably 24 hours actually, they figured out what, what was wrong. Um, went to the ER, they were doing tests on me. I just had low potassium levels, which was the first thing that they saw that was kind of abnormal. And uh, they did an x-ray, didn't find anything really on the x-ray. And then they took me up to the cardiology part of the hospital, and they did more tests, EKG, and a heart echo the next morning, which was when they found out I had the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And then we had a uh, uh, procedure to put the ICD in a couple hours later. What was your reaction when they told you that you had this? I didn't. I, I questioned it kind of, but I mean, it wasn't going to question the doctor's diagnosis, but it was kind of more of a why did it happen now if I've always had it because it's a it's a genetic mutation that you have from birth I guess from what the doctors have told me and um, so it was more so of a question why did it happen now and from what the doctors explained it was a it was more so of a perfect storm of being dehydrated being on that 13 play drive without coming out um, having this pre-existing heart condition as well as low potassium levels and all those combined Plus, with the heat and maybe the adrenaline rush of the first game of the year, just kind of accumulated to me going down. There was a rumor in the press box you actually told the folks in the van, the ambulance, you wanted to come back to the stadium. Is yeah. that true? Uh, you can probably ask um, Will or uh, Zach, our, one of our trainers there in there with me, but from what I heard, that's what I said. I don't remember saying that. I think the first thing I remember in the ambulance is like, yelling real loud or something because I was mad that uh, I wasn't in the game because I asked what the uh, score was and they said the game wasn't over and I was like, well, why am I not in the game? Uh, I think you partially answered my question. What did you think you were in the ambulance for? I mean, when you come up and you wake up and you go like, I'm in an ambulance. Did you think that you got hit on the play and didn't remember or something like that? No, I, I think I will. From what I remember, I woke up and I kind of picked my head up and saw the people in the ambulance working on me. And uh, I kind of, from my memory, kind of still hazy to me. Uh, just ask what, what's going on there. Like, uh, you had an accident or you went down on the field. Uh, we're taking you to the hospital. You're going to be all right. And I was like, well, I know I'm going to be all right. I feel all right. Well, what's the score? And, yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling now? Perfect. Yeah, perfectly fine. Like from the time I woke up in the ambulance until now, nothing's changed in my like my conscious health, where I what I feel and everything like that. The uh, only thing that's changed is this little machine they put in me, but uh, that's the only thing that sticks out. It's a little sore because they had to cut me open just a little bit, but other than that, I feel perfectly fine. I feel like I can go out and play football still, and probably could, but there's just a chance that me going down could happen again, so that's why I had to go through this process. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Yeah, hypertrophic right? cardiomyopathy. It's the uh, leading cause of death in young athletes, so how fortunate do you feel that you had the medical attention when you did? Yeah, that, that was a, another big thing that I've been thinking about, me and my family, uh, just talking about this situation was, uh, obviously we think that God has a, had a plan for me, and he wanted me to go down in, at this certain time in this certain situation with the right medical help and medical equipment around uh, to bring me back. And yeah, I, I don't really try to question it, uh, just try to look at all the positives. So I'm very grateful that everything happened the way it did and I wasn't out back in Wisconsin or here with some of my teammates going and hanging out outside without Will or any of the doctors around to help bring me back. You said you were from Wisconsin. Was your family able to come? 
Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, this is probably the saddest part was my parents were watching the were watching the game with my little brother who's now in college, and uh, if you I watched the Tennessee Tech highlight video on uh, YouTube the other day. So basically, what happened from what I saw was the, the view panned out from the screen, and then the announcers were saying that they couldn't say who it was and things like that. And then my brother was on Twitter and he got a Twitter feed saying it was me. And then so my brother was the first to find out and he told my parents right away who were right next to him. And then probably 30, 30 seconds later to a minute later, Mr. Johnson, our AD, called my parents and, that, and he told them that I was alert and responding in the ambulance, which put them at ease. But they got in the car right away and drove nine hours to Cookville. And I saw him in the morning and yeah, just talking to him, put him at ease. Think, thinking back over time, did you ever have any episodes that would be now perceived as a warning and elevated heart rate after a workout or anything like that? No, because that, that's like a, that's a funny thing about it is a lot of our training in the summer when we're down here with coach, our, our strength coach, Coach Medler, is a lot of heart rate, um, being conscious of your own heart rate and things like that. So we'll do extensive tempo runs and we'll, right after one of our training sessions or each part of one of our circuits, we'll check our heart rate and you're supposed to be in a heart rate range and every time I've never been out of range sometimes I've been below range where I should have been so that's just it's kind of uh, it's just funny. How has this experience impacted your perspective on football and life? Yeah I still love it uh, that's I, obviously I want to be a part of it still uh, the way I think about it now is telling some of my teammates and my uh, parents this too uh, I kind of I wanted to leave the game on my own terms and not have a doctor tell me I can't play anymore. So now that kind of puts a competitive fire in me to stick around the game as a coach or a help, some type of help as long as I can, so I can dictate when I want to be away from the game instead of having a doctor tell me I can't because of medical reasons. So you'll travel with the team if possible. Oh yeah, I'm I'm already going to Ole Miss. I'll be up with Coach Fuqua in the booth, uh, helping them out, and I'll the, talk to Coach Ayers, and they want me to be a player coach kind of like how uh, Cole Higby is now with the team. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. What is the prognosis in terms of your limitations physically? Uh, just for, that's some, uh, something I still have to talk to uh, the cardiologist down here, Dr. Ike, about um, to get more details on. But as of now, just for the first month, I can't uh, lift this arm up above my shoulder. Um, can't have it be tugged out of nowhere. Just be cautious of that, people hitting the, where the, they cut me open. Um, and other than that, nothing really. And then just from what I was told back in Cookville from the cardiologists up there, you, can, you live basically a normal life, just maybe when you work out you can't do pull-ups or pull-downs on a lap machine. Um, anything that will really jerk your shoulder out of place or something like that, just to be cautious of the, the wires that are leading down into your heart and stuff like that. But, and as a, an athlete, how, is, how did you come to terms with that? It's tough. Yeah, it's tough, but my, I don't really, I wasn't trying to think about the things I can't do anymore. I'm more focused on, like, what's my new hobby going to be? So I've been already, like, texting a bunch of my friends back home, like, yeah, I got to get into hunting or I got to get into camping more so than I've already have been. So we can, and they, a lot of my friends back at home are big golfers. So they told me that now I finally got to go out and golf with them. So that might be a thing I have to get into. So golf is the front runner for you? Yeah, and I've always wanted to do I've never been good at it. I've tried, but I think more practice will help with that. Was coaching in your future afterwards, no matter what, or is that a new? Yeah, I've, uh, I've always thought about it. Uh, obviously, I didn't think it was going to come like this, where I was being able to have a position, at, or I was asked to be put in this position by Coach Ayers because of this condition. but. Yeah, obviously I've always thought about being a part of the game as long as I can, uh, can be. And uh, basically my plan from here on out is uh, I'm still a double major in business economics and English here at Wofford. And I'm going to finish out my career here at Wofford academically. And I've had aspirations to be, go to law school. I had a good internship with Hodge and Langley Law Firm over the summer. And uh, basically now the, the front goal for me is to try to get a GA job, graduate assistant job in a law school at a, at a big university and help coach with them and get my law degree. What was the reaction from your teammates? Uh, yeah, that, that's also a big, that was also real sad for me to hear and watch. Uh, just, 
I mean, we all love each other like brothers, so um, yeah, their reaction was probably fit for the cause. If any of them went down, I would have been crying on the sidelines too, but I'm just glad that they all like got it together and got a win because that makes this whole situation a lot better too because I would have hated to have this happen and have a loss. So. <laughs> so, yeah, it was big that we got a win and just seeing them all for the first time on a game, we all got big hugs together and stuff like that. And all my uh, teammates that I live with were helping me out whenever I need help. So it's, it's good. When, when did you find out that it was a win? How soon after? Just right when it happened, I was kept asking. Uh, I think it was, I was asking Zach or Dr. Cole in the, in the emergency room, and that's when it finally, they were like, yeah, fine, we, were, we won 21-7. I was like, all right, cool. And so I could relax about that. And then uh, also, uh, one of my, two of my friends, Alex Hardy and Ellie Varn, came to the hospital to see me, which was really cool. And the mayor? Of oh, yeah. Tennessee Tech community was awesome. The head coach, their head trainer, um, the mayor, their athletic director, they all came and saw me and comforted me and my family during this time. So, yeah, that was awesome for them to come and do that. So I have a, a profound respect for Tennessee Tech and their whole community. Your folks fly, drive, how'd they get here? Drove nine hours straight. Got in the car and got going. Got it done. And it was kind of, also that's what, uh, one of the things that's kind of funny about how we feel like God had a plan was my dad had this whole week off of, uh, of work. So it's just kind of funny how everything worked out the way it did. And yeah, just grateful to be here. After they found out you were going to be all right, I know that being around Walford football, not as much as you guys, but the last 10 years or whatever, I know how close you guys are to Coach Harris. Yeah. And I, I was just wondering, uh, I know he's probably spoke to you about your future mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, how, how was it talking to the coach the first time and all that? You know? Yeah, the first time I talked to Coach was uh, that night. He came with Coach Fiquay and his wife to um, the hospital room that I was in. They kind of sat around for probably 15, 20 minutes and talked to me, and they were just saying, yeah, this is like, how, do you, how are you not feeling any worse? They were real surprised at my, uh, like my, how good my spirits were, but like I said, I didn't feel anything wrong. And yeah, just talking to him, uh, I'm just grateful that he's still allowing me to be with the team. And uh, they're still gonna be here. Like I said, this is my family. That's like my dad away from home. Like he, he's, a, he's the wise man on campus that we all look, look to for guidance. So he's, he's gonna be a huge help now to the, to the day I leave Wofford and beyond. He'll be a huge help in my life. How do you imagine your emotions are gonna be like when you step onto the field again? Uh, good, I, I don't have any like bad, uh, uh, what's the word? I don't have any like ill uh, ill thoughts towards football. Uh, I feel like football kind of saved my life. Talking to my dad because if I wasn't playing football, this could have happened somewhere else. And I mean, football is a contact sport. You got to have a lot of medical personnel and equipment around. So it was fit for this to happen on a football field. So without football, probably wouldn't be here if this would have happened anywhere else. So yeah, I'm, I'll be grateful every time I step out on the field. I'll be happy I'm out there. Probably goes without saying, but do you have anybody you want to thank from this whole experience? Yeah, yeah first off, God for keeping me here. Uh, and then my parents for coming down. Uh, my girlfriend, Brooke Olson, coming down. Uh, tried to surprise me, but I, she couldn't surprise me. She had to tell me she was coming. Um, uh, yeah, my friends and family back home, all my friends and football family down here for being so supportive. Uh, all the doctors and medical staff in Cookville and then uh, doctors and medical staff here, and then just everybody else who's reached out to me on social media or got a hold of my phone number and called me or texted me and had good thoughts and prayers for me. I just want to thank everybody for the, for the good wishes because I feel like uh, I was telling this to a lot of other people. I feel like the good wishes and prayers helped also bring me back. So, When are you on track to graduate? 2018. 2018. Yeah, 2018. Was there anybody that contacted you on social media that you were surprised at, that you thought this has gotten bigger than I thought it was? Uh, Brent Burson tweeted at me, or t had me in a tweet, so that was pretty cool. He's like a, he's a Wofford legend around here, so it was cool to have his support. And then uh, some people just sharing stories on, sending me direct messages on Facebook, sharing stories about their uh, 
personal experiences with this or with this um, heart condition or other heart conditions and things like that, which I get, uh, I get pretty, I, mean, I get happy to read those to know that you, there's other people going through the, through the same situation and stuff like that.